Hello and welcome everyone to the Preservation Workshop for June 2022. My name is Katie Reinhardt and I'm a librarian here at the Richardson Sloan Special Collections Center of the Davenport Public Library. Today I will demonstrate some of the ways that you, our researchers, can help us to preserve our collection materials. By properly handling documents, photographic images, books, and microfilm, you can ensure that they will still be available for other special collections researchers to use into the future. Let's say I'm just now arriving at the Special Collections Center on the main floor of the Main Street Library. I will have entered without any food or drink. I will have washed my hands and dried them thoroughly. I find a free, clean table and set my purse and other bags down on the floor or on a chair. I'm making sure that there'll be plenty of space to view the collection materials safely. I will remove a coat and anything else on my person that may brush against or snag the materials, such as long necklaces, bracelets, badges. I'll set up my laptop for note taking, making sure that the cord is out of the way. Today I will be using just pencil and paper to take my notes. We ask you not to use pen because there's always a chance the ink will leak out and permanently mark the materials. Pencil marks, on the other hand, if they're made by accident, can be much more easily removed. Materials in our archives and manuscript collections are stored in document boxes of various shapes and sizes appropriate to the items they are protecting. This one is a standard 5-inch document storage box. To avoid cluttering up your workspace, move one box at a time to the table and remove one folder at a time from the box. Hold the folder's place among the others in the box with a marker made from acid-free folder stock. Open the folder flat on the table surface. Turn the papers over like turning the pages of a book to maintain the order within the folder. Use two hands like this on opposite edges near the corners to turn the pages. You don't want to actually turn by the corners because they can break very easily. Work very slowly and carefully. Watch for tears or folds. Use your whole hand to support these vulnerable spots. You can also use a paper tab to help you turn fragile pages. Avoid touching the surface of the documents. Do not place anything on top of them or lean on them to write your notes. If you must remove an item from the folder, Mark its place with an acid-free paper strip. 
You can also mark items in the folder to be photocopied with these strips. Copying is allowed, but please ask a staff member for permission first. Please also ask for help carrying items to the photocopier or the scanner or positioning them to be photographed. When you are finished looking at the documents in a folder, be sure they are stacked neatly and that no paper edges are extending beyond the edges of the folder. You can then return the folder to the box and remove your marker. Some of our archival materials are too large to fit in the standard size document storage box. These items are kept on the shelves in drop front boxes. To access the items inside this box, first remove the top. Press down on the drop front. and carefully slide the whole block out onto your table surface. Move the box out of the way and just with the smaller size documents we'll be turning these pages over one by one grasping with both hands on the edges close to the opposite corners. That way you can keep things in order and also see if there's anything on the back. You can use the backing sheets that we have in this box to help support the documents as you turn them over. Again, watch for vulnerable spots and use your paper tab and a support board if necessary. Again, please avoid touching the surface of these materials. Architectural drawings, posters, maps, and large format artworks are kept in the black flat files in special collections. A staff member will help you to remove an item's folder from the flat file drawer and place it on a board to be carried to your table. Here we have a map of Davenport from 1918 in color. When you're studying the map, avoid leaning on it to see something at the far edge. Instead, walk around the table with an item this large and have a look. To view the other side of a large item like this, We'll close it back up in the folder give it some good support underneath 
You might need a partner to help you with this. And flip it over. And here we can see the back side of the map with all of the advertisements from that era. Although some maps like this one are protected by a mylar enclosure, meaning they're encapsulated, the paper within can still be damaged by creasing or rolling, so do take care. Most of the photographic prints in our collection are kept in folders in st standard document storage boxes and interleaved with acid-free paper. Open folders flat on the table and treat as you would unbound documents in archival collections, turning with both hands. Cotton gloves are not necessary as long as your hands are clean and you handle the prints by their edges. Never touch the surface of a photograph. A staff member can help you view photographic materials in other formats such as tintypes, glass plate negatives, and lantern slides. For postcards, we simply ask that you do not remove those from their mylar enclosures. Rare and fragile books are kept in the closed stacks. Some are enclosed in protective boxes like this one. Just open this tab. The long tab, the short tabs, and remove the entire book. Move this out of the way. The difference between handling the items we've seen thus far and handling a book is caring for the binding. You can support a stiff or fragile binding on cradles, foam supports, or on the pillows like this one we have here in Special Collections. Soft weights or snakes. Keep the pages open with a gentle pressure. Place these only on the blank areas of the pages. Turn the pages as you would the unbound documents we've seen before, slowly and carefully. watching for those vulnerable, vulnerable spots. Using a tab when pages are especially fragile. These are adjustable. 
depending on how stiff the binding in is and how tight the pages are. And remember to ask Special Collections staff for help in handling any of these materials. Special Collections researchers may select books from the open stacks without staff assistance. Here's how to remove them safely from the shelves. You'll place your finger on the pages, beyond the spine, and tip the book gently forward so you can grasp both sides. Better yet, you can gently push the surrounding volumes back until there's rooms to grasp it. If you plan to look at multiple volumes, please place them on a cart like this with a bookend to keep them stacked vertically. Please consult your books one at a time, remembering to take care of the binding, to turn your pages slowly, to give them the extra support that they need. Please remember not to lean on the pages of the book while it's open, and please do not stack books one on top of another. Some of the items on the open stacks will be in envelopes like this one. Take care that the item does not snag on the folds of the envelope as you pull it out slowly flat on the surface of the table. Some items will be in four flap enclosures. They open like so. And please remove the item from the enclosure and set it aside. keeping your workspace free of clutter. Please remember to ask for tools such as book pillows, weights, snakes, paper tabs, support boards, etc. And alert a staff member if you find a book in need of repair or if you have any other handling questions. Please remember to leave your books on the table or on the carts when you are finished, so staff can put them away. This is how we count how many items have been used. You may also access our collection of records on microfilm on your own. If you haven't used our microfilm readers before, please make sure you get instructions from a Special Collections staff member. To review quickly, the film will come out over the top of the reel, then under the roller guides and the glass, and back up again 
onto the uptake reel where the end needs to be secured. Failing to load the film properly can result in damage to the images, the reel, and the reader. Please remember to advance and rewind the film slowly and never touch the surface with the images. When you are finished, place the reel carefully back into the box. And as with the books on the open stacks, we want to count how many microfilm reels are used. So please place them in the baskets on top of the cases and not back on the drawers. This concludes our materials handling demonstration. Thank you for helping us to take good care of our very special collections. Again, my name is Katie Reinhardt. If you have any questions about materials handling or other preservation issues, please feel free to contact me or any of the other staff members of the Richardson Sloan Special Collections Center of the Davenport Public Library. We'll see you next time for the preservation workshop in August. Take care.